Hello, Fucandy here, and welcome to a brand new vanilla Let's Play City Skylines series, and potentially the last time I ever start a city in City Skylines 1. I am, yeah, feeling quite excited, but also a little bit sad at the prospect of that. So those of you familiar to my channel will know I am really a modded player, I have been for several years now, but I started off vanilla. I played vanilla for many, many years before I found mods. So I felt that before City Skylines 2 came out, I really wanted to kind of revisit the vanilla gameplay in this game. So that's what we're doing right here. And we are on Wolf Creek. This map is absolutely stunning. It comes with the Campus DLC. If you don't have that or you're missing any of the DLCs, please do check out my instant gaming link in the description below. There's a whole host of games for PC and console at mega discounted prices, and it also helps to support the channel. And the reason why I chose this is because I've never actually built a city on this map. It does not have sea connection, which is the thing that always kind of off put me from it, but we can work around that here. We've got all three other outside connections, so obviously we'll work with those. But the landscape on this map is, is stunning. <laughs> Absolutely stunning, these mountain ranges. And there's some kind of cute little details nestled in there. We've got a maze over here, <laughs> some kind of hilltop tribal area castle not really sure, sure. <laughs> some interesting bits and there's also some obvious horrific things because this was quite early on in the city skylines journey i mean what is this <laughs> truly awful and of course the uh, ugly vanilla intersection so as soon as we unlock these tiles we'll be sorting those out but the landscape is amazing so that's really what's drawn me to this map and back to a boreal theme so yes, we are playing in vanilla, uh, but full disclosure, there is a couple of mods. So most of these are for recording purposes, for visual purposes, so I can record some nice cinematics and such like for you. But we do have line tool and forest brush that do not add any functionality that you cannot do in the vanilla game. So the only reason why I've got these is to help speed up the process. So ultimately I can make more content for you guys. And I do also have hide it. And the reason for that is to remove the pollution areas, uh, the visuals of the pollution, which makes it a much better viewing experience for you guys, but also for me as well. <laughs> so that is the kind of one mod that's a little bit cheaty, but I feel like it's necessary in this case. Graphics wise, there's there's nothing. Um, I am using the warm color correction override just with the base game. There's no extra LUTs, there's no render it, there's no relight, there is nothing. So it should be as you guys experience it too. So when I start a map, the first thing I always do is kind of picture where my downtown's going to be. However, with this one, because it's the last one, I kind of want your involvement in that. I'm thinking maybe over on this island, that was one location I picked out, or actually potentially just in the middle of this landmass, potentially could be up next to the lake. If it's in the middle of this landmass, we can have a sprawling suburban sprawl all the way around the kind of peak skyline central business district, which could be kind of fun. But you guys can let me know what you think of that in the comments and we'll kind of come back to that. But in terms of road network planning, it's pretty obvious with our highway crossing over here that this one is going to need to reach out towards the lake area. And we're also going to need access left and right across the map. I'm thinking this will probably come across and bridge over to this area over here to give an alternative to this highway. So that's what we're going to need to think about with our network planning starting off. So first things first, as always, we're going to have to put in a very small section of road so that we open up all of the other road options we have at the start of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and find our one way road. We'll do it without parking because we definitely don't want people parking on this. This will probably be upgraded to highway ultimately anyway. And we're just going to draw this out a little bit further. Now, I don't want to go too far because we don't need to at the moment. We want to save our budget, but I do want to come out just a little bit. So I'm thinking probably to this point for now will do and that will give us enough room to put in a nice intersection here because I am going to start in a way that is going to make most of your toes curl to be honest and we are literally just going to put in a road straight across here because what I want to do is put in a nice sunken intersection with a road going over this way straight over the highway continuing on, on this way and a kind of roundabout sunken interchange into it but of course we don't have landscaping tools unlocked until we've got a population of 1500. So for now I'm just going to reserve the space and do a very <laughs> nondescript entrance to our city which will work absolutely fine because our population is so small at the start we're not going to get traffic issues from this. 
I'm actually going to go ahead and upgrade this one to the larger road to start off with because that is what we will ultimately want to come in with. Now what I want is this road to curve round and this to be kind of actually parallel to this coastline here and this will be our main kind of collector taking people on over in this direction which will flow through the first kind of starter town area that we're going to do. So I'm just going to eyeball that in for now and leave that like that and then what we can do is form a nice curve here to connect these two together. So we've got a little bend in the road. Again, it helps to create interest. We could just come out with a straight grid parallel to these networks here, but no, I like to shake it up a little bit. And before we get too far with the road network, because that's where I'll spend probably most of my money, I do want to bring in power and water and sewage uh, so that we're all set up and ready to go uh, with no problems, with no budget problems in order to afford these things. So I am actually going to start off with a bit of wind power. Now I want this, I need to be careful here, because I want this up next to the highway slightly further on here because we're going to have a farmyard in this area and I quite like the fields to sort of back onto the highway that side and maybe have the wind turbines over this side. So we do need to be careful that we're not putting these over the road otherwise we'll have to spend money moving them which is not too much of a problem but it's not ideal. So we're just going to place in two like that for now which will be plenty of power to get us started and we'll probably come in throughout the episode when we need more power to add in the coal power plant down somewhere around here now in terms of sewage i really hate pumping sewage into the water so uh, yeah we're going to go for a sewage treatment plant and we're just going to place this right in this bottom corner for now this whole starting industry area is going to be completely demolished and completely rebuilt because it is literally just to get us started until we've unlocked things like landscaping and more detailing aspects and then we can kind of go to town and designing a super nice area. Now the water of course I don't want this anywhere near the pollution so I'm going to be putting this over this side of the highway just on the edge of where the residential will start somewhere about there. Then we just want to connect up our water lines for now so I do not do pipes under the road. I'm uh, yeah not that efficient. But we are going to follow the road to start off with so that we can do like nice grids out after that i like to save my nodes as opposed to waste them under roads even though obviously that is realistically how it is designed this is a much more efficient way of doing it of course what we are also going to need to do is bring power lines down to both of these so for now again i'm just going to bring this straight out and we'll link it up to the water here we're going to continue this on down this way and we're going to link it up into the industrial area this side so now we know we've got power, water and sewage, we can go to town with our road networks just considering that we're going to need to put in more water pipes to cover the roads off as we go. So for the first part of the road network we are going to use nice 90 degree angles. We're going to maximise our zoning for this first part to get our population up to get to a point where we can unlock all the landscaping tools and the nice details so that we can start to really kind of plan and design our city in the way we want. I'm absolutely a detailer at heart, so you will find this to be relatively detail heavy, but obviously within the constraints of the vanilla game. So yeah, we are just going to be placing in nice simple square blocks for the time being. And then I do want this to kind of be a bit of a frontage road to our main collector here. I'm not going to zone along this because I think this will be quite a free flowing, fast moving road to get people around the city. So I don't really want zoning on it. And I think we can do some nice natural detailing around it to make it really kind of sit in nicely with the city itself as well. Now you don't always have to go for eight deep blocks. You know, here I've done a six deep block. It will create some more interesting zoning within it. You can kind of shape it however you would like to. So we will leave a three deep gap there for that detailing either side of this road and then we'll come out with lots of residential blocks on this side again i'm going to just have a little quick look at water pipes before we start to run out of money i'm going to bring this down a little bit and bring it across here just so we're covering off a lot of the first residential zones that we'll be putting in here and I'm also going to come down here as well just to cover off the industrial area a little bit further so that we can expand that if we need to. To actually give us pretty decent water coverage to start off with so then we can continue on putting in our roads. And of course you don't have to stick to that grid pattern so we could totally break it here. So let's kind of go out in the middle here. We'll come out 10 blocks like that and across 15. And of course, now we have got to the point where we have run out of money, but we should be well covered. So let's go ahead and get some zonings in. I'll get some residential in here. We need to jump power from here. So for the moment, I don't think I've got enough money to add the power line across here. I don't 
So we will add a couple of residential blocks here, but they will be temporary just so that we can jump the power across to our main residential area, which will be situated in here. Now I'm actually going to pre-plan and leave a little space here for a pathway through the residential blocks. Um, but we can continue zoning out all of that will be absolutely fine let's start off with a little bit of commercial so we'll just fill that block there we may have an issue with power jumping as well so we'll have to check on that and just to help them out as well though we don't have any demand for it yet we'll just draw in a small amount of industry down here all of this is going to be ripped out and completely redone in the next episode so we just need to kind of look away from the industrial area for today and focus on our first little starting town area Okay, so now that we've got the zonings in, let's hit play and wait for our residents to start arriving. Now the first car has just started to come in, so I'm going to have a look at who the first citizen is, and it is Tyler Gray. A significant thing, and they're going to the middle residence. This is the middle residence. There we go, that's Tyler Gray's house, the first citizen of our new city. I always like to have a little look at that. And of course, we're whacking it up to three speed here. Now, you would have seen I did get rid of some of the residential zones because I really need these ones to spawn in so that we can jump the power across. So let's see what happens. I mean, they should spawn in pretty quickly. We need a little bit more industrial, so that will encourage the residential growth. Let's just zone some of that in and let's hope they don't abandon before it's all started. So there we go. We finally got some zones in there and the power has jumped across. So that is good news. I'll go back ahead and rezone in all of these sections here just so that we can continue that growth on. That should be plenty of industry to start us off. I do like a high job demand. And we are slowly now starting to make money. So we can just check the first milestone is at 500 population. So that's our kind of first aim. And I will always leave it on fast speed until we get there. Ultimately, my aim is 1,500 when we get the landscaping tools. Until then, I'm just like zoning happy. <laughs> And then we can worry about the design afterwards. Now, one thing we can do while we wait for that population to grow is to actually go around and remove the traffic lights. They hamper traffic, to be honest, to begin with, especially when you don't have much going on. But I find removing them much easier. It keeps a much nicer flow. And I think, yes, we've hit Little Hamlet population of 500. Great news. So we've got a boost in money. <laughs> Every time you go up a milestone, you will get a boost. So thank goodness for that. But importantly, I think at this level, we've got taxes and garbage. Now we need to put in garbage. Otherwise the city is going to start screaming. So we need to make sure we've got the money to do that. And taxes, we want to immediately raise those. But we also do have education, healthcare and loans now. So loans is great. If we <laughs> run out of money, we can take a loan again. And frankly, it doesn't really cost much to pay them back. So it's not a terrible idea at all in the start of the city skyline city. So let's firstly go to taxes and we are going to whack these up to 12. That's the maximum you can go to before your citizens start complaining at you. So we'll put all of those up to 12 and leave that for now. And then let's go to garbage. Now we have got two options here. We've got landfill and also the recycling center. If you've got green cities, you'll have this. The recycling center has vastly less pollution and also doesn't require emptying. <laughs> so it's generally a pretty good idea if you have it. So let's go ahead and add in our recycling center there. And that's pretty much used all of our budget. So I'm gonna whack it back up to fast speed so we can continue the growth of the city here. And while we do still have a little bit of money here, let's add a little bit more into our industrial grid. So I've actually probably gone too far here to interfere with our intersection that I do want to put in. So we'll continue it on up this way where we did also put water pipes in and just start to create some very basic grids of industry up here. Again, reminder that we're ignoring this section <laughs> for this particular episode. And let's also now think about power. So I think if we delete these, yeah, power isn't going to jump across there. We of course need to remember to de-zone them. So let's go ahead and do that. We don't want those growing back in. Definitely don't want buildings there. But now what we can do is add in our power lines to hit this area. So we'll come in and draw this across like that for now. Again, that's kind of temporary until power will jump from the power source over there. 
and we'll also bring a power line across here to get access to this residential side. Now we're making quite a bit of money actually already so what we can do is start to continue to flesh out our zonings and in particular our residential zoning that's super important obviously for getting this population in. So yeah we'll have this larger block here and actually what we could do in the middle to create some interest is not have just straight lines absolutely everywhere we could have a little bit of curvature so let's go to freeform for this and um, we're going to kind of bring this across into the middle and then out to this top side like that again just to create a little bit of interest in there then we can continue to bring out some residential blocks this side now if you're worried about the assets that are coming in you could of course specifically a zone so by that i mean draw in set types of squares so a four by three actually gets some really like luxury mansions when it gets up to the maximum level four by fours are obviously the biggest houses if you just wanted small houses you could go for two by twos even one by twos let them grow in you can zone them in like this let them grow in and then fill in the gaps between them for this i'm not too concerned i'm quite happy we've got four deep blocks here so all of them are going to be four deep housings so they're going to be relatively large housing and i'm not too concerned with it like my modded self is going to ignore these <laughs> art deco houses sprouting up in the middle of this nice low kind of suburb but that's city skylines and i fully embrace this game in all forms <laughs> So we have got a little bit more commercial demand now so i'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit more commercial zoning into here i think actually we'll break this block here because i've got an idea of what i want to put in there we need to think about schools and ideal locations for them so i'm thinking a high school would be quite nice next to the kind of main town center commercial district here and this is why i like to actually do these blocks of six and just mass zone into there because what we do get is this really kind of interesting commercial look here and I'm absolutely going to go around and historicalize these buildings and the ones that I like because the commercial in the game you get some horrendous assets as the levels go up so it's a very good idea to come in and do this when you see assets that you like like this marketplace we've got two of those there I'm not loving that this one's much better so I'm going to let this one upgrade so I won't historicalize that for now not overly keen on this one or this one actually so let's just go ahead and delete those and see if something else zones in there but what we do get with this six deep block is you'll see some of these are like two two deep and then we've got a four deep we've got a four deep there two deep there and it mixes up the patterns of it and creates a really nice looking block so we don't get this get this kind of like obvious hole in the middle of them uh we get some quite nice little areas here actually vanilla prop detailing ready made yeah it's kind of cute and of course we can do exactly the same with the housing as well if we start to see houses that we particularly like we can go in and historicalize them i'm not loving this tiny little one wide house so i'm actually going to delete both of those and we'll let those regrow in we could even dezone this let a two by four grow in there and then rezone our three by four next to it just so that we can avoid having those tiny little miniature houses next to these much larger ones and now that's started to grow in we can of course come back in with our three by four there so the next milestone we're trying to hit is 1000 worthy village and with that we do get districts policies but also fire police and various different specializations in our industry which is super useful but fire police is definitely the thing i'm looking out for but yeah we're starting to get issues with power so i am going to come in and place in a coal power plant somewhere down here for now so i think what we will do is actually just extend this road out a little bit and we can put it down here next to the sewage treatment plant and we'll just need to make sure we've connected in that power line correctly there uh, so we can have a tiny bit more industrial zoning in this side too but we're now getting much larger residential demand so let's go ahead and keep expanding our residential grid with that we have reached worthy village already so let's not forget to, to get in our fire and police you will know actually i haven't added healthcare or education yet because i kind of find they're not immediately needed they obviously help the buildings to level up which helps to grow your population but i'll just wait until you've got a little bit of money before you do that education is probably the first one that i would put in because if you go to the education tab you can see a hundred percent of our citizens are uneducated right now <laughs> So we need to amend that. We need to start getting them educated. So that will be the first thing that I will put in. 
So just thinking about our elementary school, I'd like to position this somewhere where it's kind of more meaningful than just placing it on a road. So I'm going to give it its own road here. And of course, inspecting the asset as well. It has these car parks on this side. So I always like to put them up against a road so that it looks like it makes sense and not just some kind of like skinny car park in the middle of nowhere. And of course, we've also got this playground. Now, when I play modded, I extend these out with the industrial fence that you can find in Find It. We don't have the luxury of that now. So we are going to wait till we've got fences and parks. And then we can also add in a few more extra playground pops and extend this playground right out. So that will be a fun thing to do when the time comes. And also looking at this, I've just taken this road a little bit fast. I'm actually just going to delete it out. The asset won't delete, so it's not a problem. And we'll just bring it out to there so the concrete kind of lines up to the edge of it. And it's all still connected and absolutely fine there. Now you will notice as well in this block here, I'm going to leave a little bit of space this side because we do want to add parks into this area to keep the citizens happy and also help to level them up which will again help to increase our population. So I'm going to leave this space for the moment so that we can definitely get a park in this side. I so just thinking about police and fire and healthcare as well. Um, so I think I will add in a little police station here. So we're just going to bring a small road across like that. Again, we're going to give it its own kind of entrance, its own look to it. I think I'll use the European police station for this because it kind of has a sort of like small town vibe to it, I feel. So yeah, I kind of like how that looks there. And then what I will do is just bring this road round and we're going to leave a nice open 4x4 block there so we can have some greenery in front of it. We want open green spaces in the city. We don't want to be mass zoning absolutely everywhere. We want to be thinking about the aesthetic of it and how it looks. Now let's just continue on these roads so that we have a guideline of where they're going to sit. And what I will do now actually as well is take out a loan. We've got a larger one of 60,000 now, so we're gonna take that one out. It really doesn't hurt your budget in the early game, so I would just go ahead and do it if you need to. We're gonna extend those roads out so we know where they are going. And what I would like is this road to kind of curve round and be parallel to this. So we get a bit of a change up in the orientation of the grid. So I'm just going to bring out a guide road for a second and we'll bring it out to about there and then we're going to create a road snapping into obviously the angles of that there. Now we'll just delete this out. We don't want that going straight into there. And then what we can do is create a nice smooth curve using the road guideline snapping here and that then gives us a change to our grid shape. So we will come back to that shortly. But we've got a huge, huge industrial demand. So let's keep on expanding out this grid here. Do a slightly larger grid for it. I cannot wait to get rid of all of this and put in a really nice farm in this area when we come to the next episode. But for now, we're going to have to suffer through it. And we have also got a bit more commercial demand as well. So let's go ahead and just put in a couple of sort of smaller local shops down here. We can space them out quite nicely. We can still make sure we've got room for our park there. Um, and yeah, I think I'll just leave it like that. Just a couple of local shops to serve these residents over this side. So I'm going to start bringing out some roads up here to start some more residential grids up this side. I'm just holding fire a little bit for this town centre area, like I mentioned. So we will just continue on up here for now. And again, I don't want super rigid blocks, but we're going to go 30 along as a kind of standard and then we'll mix it up as we go. Now this one, we could almost bring it straight into there, but not quite. So let's give it a very slight bend as we go into there. And again, that could just creates a little bit more interest. And finally, we have hit Tiny Town. So that's a population of 1,500. And this is the key one. <laughs> this is the one. We do get industry areas. So next time we will be coming in and doing some of that. We've got landscaping, most importantly, parks and plazas, which is a massive one for me. And we've also started to get some unique buildings as well. I wouldn't recommend using them yet because they usually eat into your hourly budget quite substantially. So let's firstly start off with education. As I mentioned, that is actually quite important to start getting your citizens educated from early on. You can see we're now getting up to a little bit of educated Putting in a high school will give us well-educated citizens. Obviously, a university for highly educated. We don't need that yet, but we really do want well-educated. So I'm going to drop in a high school here, and we're going to do a nice little grounds around it. 
But one thing actually I do want to do here is add a little bit of detailing around this school. Like you see we've got these tiny bits of fencing here. We can actually help those out by making it make a little bit more sense. So if we bring the road one tile away, let's now go into our fences that we have very nicely unlocked here. And I think we'll just go for a park fence for this. Let's turn off all snapping down here. And you can also set up hotkeys for this in the options if you weren't aware of that. So I have done that. You'll see me not clicking on this when I'm turning off snapping quite often. And let's bring in a fence around it. Now I want a little break in it round about here so that students can get out and go to a playing field that we're going to put to the other side. We will bring this up to the road this side and we're probably not going to be able to sneak one in there. No, we can't. So this kind of open green space is slightly annoying. <laughs> I won't lie, but it is also something else you could detail out if you wanted to. So we could like remove this bit of road here. It doesn't really make sense to from a traffic flow perspective. So we're going to leave it, but you could do that and then add fencing all the way around it if you wanted to. And then this also then gives us the opportunity to add trees around it and add a nice bit of decoration. So we have got a couple of new trees with the latest update, which is pretty exciting. We've got the silver birch and also the Norway spruce, which both go very, very nicely into the, the boreal biome that we have here. So we can surround the, the school with a few of these. And I think we will come in with a couple of live oaks on the entrance here. And also just to make sure that that is kind of looks like an entrance, we can add a little bit of pathway like that just to signify that students can walk from the back of the school out the back there. We'll come back and tidy that up in the detailing in a second. But coming on to parks, I do want to add a playing field for this. So with the Sports Venues Content Creator Pack, we get these amazing community playing fields. We're actually going to add in a community baseball field here. And I'm going to put it in right there. So we've got this nice kind of like gap of two in between there to put some pathways in. So again, this is the kind of thing that we'll come through and do in the detailing, but we obviously want to make sure that citizens can walk from this road to this road. So just adding in a very small piece of path like that, we'll make sure that that is possible. But then also here, what we can do is bring this one out to give pedestrian access round the side of this playing field. So we'll leave it there for now and then come in with a nice bit of detailing around it. So we can use some of the hedges a little bit of lantana here or there, maybe a couple even of, of roadies just to brighten that up. And a few trees as well, because they're out of the way of the baseball field. So we can definitely afford to get away with a few trees out here. Particularly loving this little pine tree, I think, for our tree palette there. That just helps to add a little bit of interest to the kind of mass zoned areas that you tend to do around it in vanilla. And let's not also forget here that we do also have access to car parks now. So let's go ahead and add in a car park for the school and we'll just add that in there for now. And we could also add a little extra basketball court surrounding the school too. And then with a bit of trees around this and a bit of extra detailing, this will kind of feel like a really nice school campus, I think, here and sits in really nicely against this main collector as well with the big commercial town centre blocks around it. Now in here as well, I would also like to add a kind of central park to our little mini town centre area here, which is the giant park with trees. I think we could actually go back a row. So let's have a little bit more commercial because we definitely have the demand for it right now. So let's go ahead and zone in this block of commercial here. And then we can frame this police station as well. If we just turn this back to freeform, let's turn off snapping and we can just Kind of wind to the road down there again which helps to break up the rigidity of some of these straight roads and grids now if you're having issues like this what i would recommend is deleting out one of your roads and then we can draw this up to the road guidelines and this can snap nicely down to it and then continue on the road and there we go we've got our road in so let's have a nice space for our park in here so i'll bring that road up like that Let's grab our large park with trees. Now, the lovely thing about this is that we can add paths into the sides and the back of it. So let's go ahead and grab our concrete path because that's what's used in this particular park. And what we can do is start to bring out connections like this up to other areas. So we could do the same out here. We could just bring this straight out and then maybe another diagonal connection down to that corner like this. And then that just helps to expand out 
the vanilla park and make it a little bit more unique and different. So it's not the same every time you plop this asset into your city as well, which yeah adds quite a lot of interest, I think. Yeah, we could do something like that. But that then kind of mirrors the shape of it around there. Um, and then with that, I mean, yeah, I struggle <laughs> with the horrendous vanilla trees, but there's nothing we can do about this. So let's actually embrace it and add to it. <laughs> I may not use necessarily the small tree which is used on this, but we will add some vanilla trees around this to help it blend in. So in particular, these ones, a little bit of light greenery, but then also come in with some lovely conifers and other things around it and this then just yeah massively expands out that park area so it looks an awful lot bigger than it did when we started and let's not also forget that in parks we also have the props menu here so we can go ahead and actually add some quite interesting little features so i'm thinking this little stand on this corner is quite nice there so yeah we'll add that in and we can actually then start to think about different angles and little points of interest in the city by adding a bit more detail around this so I definitely think a little bit of lantana overgrowth around it and maybe even a, a couple of roadies would look particularly nice. And then going back into our park props, of course, we've also got benches so we can extend out the benches. Now, just think about this park, actually, they are using the high level bench. So let's go ahead and use that just for consistency purposes as well. I always like to inspect the assets and see what's on it and see what I can kind of use and extend out of to make it a little bit more original. And and it's not just mods that can do that for you. You can absolutely do that in the vanilla game as well. You just need to get a bit creative with it. Yeah, something like that starts to look a lot nicer. Of course, they're not going to use the benches, but it looks pretty. <laughs> Now, now that we've got parks, we also want to think about walkability. So joining up these connections, like I've mentioned, whether our zebra crossings is really quite important here. So we'll definitely be adding little path connections like this. And we can do exactly the same thing the other side as well. And cycling is also quite an important aspect. Now, I don't think we're at a stage where we've unlocked any bike roads yet. No, we haven't. So for the time being, we could actually just start to encourage it by putting in something like a bike lane up the middle here. Now, of course, that's going to, yeah, we're going to delete out all the little cross paths that I've just put in. We'll draw in the bike lane like that, and then, of course, we can just come back in and add our little cross paths. Now, people can cycle and walk on these pavement paths. So just bear that in mind as well, as you may prefer to just do that rather than the dedicated cycle lanes, but I quite like the aesthetic of the markings on the dedicated cycle lanes, so that's why we've used those here. And we've got another space here where there definitely is screaming out for a little bit of detailing. So I've just added in our little concrete path there. We could actually even upgrade that to a gravel path. And then if we come into props, we can add our own lights to it. Because I think for security of this kind of neighbourhood, you'd probably want lights on your little black back alleys, wouldn't you? It feels like a family neighbourhood. So let's add a couple of lights in there. And we could even add the odd bench as well. Just a couple like that will do nicely. And then as well to help act as a bit of privacy to some of these houses because you'll see if you're walking down this path i can literally see straight into the backyard uh so i think what we will do is add a tiny bit of forestry fence actually into here which feels like quite a nice privacy fence to have in this area again if you've got the industries dlc you'll have access to this lovely wooden fence so we can draw that in either side like that and then of course we can come in around it and start adding in the odd tree here or there. Something like that and then we've got a nice little alleyway in there. People moving backwards and forwards already which is lovely to see. Now you'll see with areas like this, one major part of the latest update and the final update to City Skylines is a zoning adjuster. So let's go ahead and take a little look at its use. So you can toggle the sides of the road that you're zoning on, or of course you can turn it off altogether if you didn't want zoning on a road, which is really useful for areas exactly like this where the zoning is all kind of broken up a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is turn it on so it's only on the right hand side and it's whatever way you're looking at it. So if I draw it here, it's going to be on that side. If I draw it here, it's going to be on that side. So it's the, the, the way that you are looking at the road based on that picture is going to be where it zones. So I'm actually going to go ahead and upgrade this road. Now you see we can't upgrade it, which is uh, nice and annoying. So we'll just delete it out and we'll redraw it in. So what we want 
is just the zoning on this side of it and not in this side so it doesn't break it up. So let's turn snapping on to get our angle. Then we'll turn it off because we're on freeform. We'll just bend that in and you can see it's not zoned in that space now. So now we've got a much nicer square in order to be able to zone in a little bit more commercial there and a bit of extra green space to do some nice detailing in as well there. So before we finish today, let's let's fix this. <laughs> let's do this properly. Let's do it justice. So I'm going to hit pause and we're going to delete out all of these roads either side of it. We won't worry about the power for the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a landscaping tools and we're going to sink in a roundabout underneath the highway that will come across it. And then we'll bridge over this collector road so that it's flowing nicely over. So it's essentially it's a very basic four way intersection. It shouldn't carry a massive amount of traffic because we're quite early on into the city here. I imagine there'll be much more development up this way. So most people will be kind of flowing on in that highway there. So let's go to shift terrain. I'm going to turn down the strength of this. We're going to right click just to sink this down a little bit. Now we don't want to go too far, but we want to go far enough that we can easily have a road over with vanilla without any anarchy mods on so that we can get the look that we want. So I'll turn up the strength now. We'll go to level terrain. I'll right click at the bottom of this, which feels like hopefully it should be OK. It may be a little bit of trial and error needed here. And we're just going to bring out quite a large area so we can turn the size up for this and we'll smooth out all of the terrain afterwards but we want to make sure we've got enough space for our big roundabout in here so we'll go something like that for now i'm slightly worried it's not going to be low enough here but we can come back to that the terrain is kind of increasing in height as it goes away from the coast there so we have actually unlocked the three lane one-way road it is the same price as the two lane 40 units so I'm going to use that and what we want to do is make sure that we are crossing in the middle of this so let's find the center here so let's draw out a road like that and then we'll find the center of these two roads by drawing in a section there we can find the guideline of it and move two points over and that will be the middle there so what we'll do from here is we'll bring out roads that are 12 in length from either side of this point Again, these are just being used as guides for the size of our roundabout right now. But this should be plenty big enough, if not a little bit too large. <laughs> so now what we want to do is just curve it out. And I can see with the terrain, we haven't pushed it back far enough. So let's do that before we do anything else. This bit also isn't level, so we'll need to redraw that. Let's push this right back out. So we've definitely got enough room to draw that roundabout in. We can just delete out that bit of road. Now we've flattened the terrain there, it will be flat underneath the road. And then we can just continue to draw it out by 12 units. We go 10, 11, 12, like that. And then we'll get our curve road tool and we'll just bring out our roundabout curves. There we go, we've got a nice huge round roundabout, but it needs to be fairly large to get all of our different slip roads onto it. So next what we wanna do is bring this road across. Now we're going to need to raise this up so let's lower this to just the smallest elevation step and we'll step this up a little bit. So I think we'll go back to here. We'll step it up by one and see if we can get across by stepping it up twice more. Yes, we can. So that is perfect. And then let's make sure that we're mirroring that on this side. So let's go down two from that point and then we can join it in there. So we've got the same slope going on either side. And then what we'll do is just draw this across the middle. Now this this middle road won't be here, so I'm not too worried about kind of like intersections or bridges over that. We also do need to delete out that guide road, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll just draw this out the same as we have done the other side. So now this is going to be a higher point of terrain here, so it may even need to slope up a little bit. But let's try and keep it as level as we possibly can. So that is actually perfect. We may have lucked out here. So we can do the same thing this side. We'll just draw it across like that and then hope that can we go straight across? No, we can't from there. So let's go to this point again and we'll just hit down three times. So we're level with terrain. And yeah, we have got a nice smooth bridge there. So it just goes up a tiny bit here to get over the roundabout, but that is not a problem at all. We could even lengthen out these sections actually a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that just so that slope is slightly less severe than it actually was there. So we'll bring this road out 12 units and bring it down 
two points like that and then we'll bring it down another point about nine units yeah that feels pretty nice to me so again two down here so we'll bring this one out straight here we'll go up to this node and then join that in there and that should be completely equal and level and yeah that slope is much much more gentle now so pleased with that okay so we have built up a bit of money and i've put in some temporary road connections to make sure people could still get in and out of the city and cross the road while we were making this junction and we'll leave it on fast place we're still making money while we do this but what we want to do now is bring out the slip roads so let's go ahead and we'll just use because we don't have highway roads for the moment so we'll just use the two lane one way road with sidewalks so there's no car parking on them and yeah we want to connect in all the different bits here so what we firstly want to do is really smooth out the terrain so we need to make these slopes a little bit less severe so we're gonna just carve in some little sloped areas to the side of this highway here that's probably the most severe section now from here we can right click here with the slope function and just draw up with our mouse to slope this out to the height of the terrain at this side and that will give us a really nice gentle connection down if you overdo it just use the smoothing tool just to smooth it back out like that and this side is going to be very very tight indeed so i think for the moment we're probably just going to have to make do with some very basic connections and then when we unlock this tile which will be the next tile we get so that we can expand our industry out next episode we'll neaten this up <laughs> and make this side look a little bit better so then with our two lane road with sidewalks we're going to bring in some connections and this is why we've had to make the roundabout quite as large as we have because otherwise we can't get in all the various slip roads that we need so we're just going to do some really basic connections in here we want to try and make sure it's as symmetrical as possible so that it looks nice and these are then going to connect up into the roundabout like this and then we can just flip that road round same goes for this side we're going to have to do it slightly further away to avoid this slope in the hill there so we can do it at this point do the same thing this side and then again just connect it into the roundabout we've, we've braced it so the roundabout should stay a nice circle for us and we'll remove these center crossroads once we are finished and then again we can just connect this in here and then make sure all of our roads are pointing in the right direction same goes for this side so i'm just going to bring out a connection like that down onto the roundabout and do a parallel connection the other side as well and then again we'll just connect these up into this road here now this could be a little bit more tricky yeah uh, because we've got the curve there it's going to be a little bit more tricky to get these in nice and symmetrical here so we may actually just delete this one out and go from slightly further away yeah now we can get that in so it's a fairly sharp turn there but it will work and I'll actually just delete out this section of road because we'll raise it up from this point to get over the main road here. Let's firstly get these connections in this side. So we are actually just going to connect it straight up into this road for now, but we'll sort that out, like I said, when we unlock that tile. So I've deleted out the bracing road so that we can get this road over the top. We can only go up by units of 12 at a time. You'll see as soon as we go more than that, it flattens out half the road and makes the road super steep. So that's the maximum we can do now what we will do is go up three clicks here and then we'll also go up another three clicks here which will give us a nice smooth slope up over the top and then this should yes go nicely over the road i want to make sure that those columns are nice and parallel so we get a good looking road there and then for now this is going to look awful <laughs> We're going to bring this down by three to here and connect it in there now that side's much steeper we'll obviously make that symmetrical to this once we open up the tile but for now that works let's go ahead and delete our little temporary collection roads in here and also up the top here as well but what i would like to do just before we get on to the detailing today is add in an extra little slip road up this side i think we're going to come from this road here and we're gonna just create an extra slip road onto this little highway here. We don't want the entrance to be too close to this one. So I'm kind of conscious of that. I do want to snap into the road guidelines though. So let's go from here. We'll see if we can connect it in there. There we go. And then we can just create a nice curve from this side like that. Then it just gives them an extra way to get onto here to avoid having to go through the roundabout if they wanna get out of the city in this direction. 
Okay, so for the start of the city, it is high time we did some detailing. We need a lot around here. <laughs> this looks very plain and uh, yeah, kind of unexciting at the moment. I do like the layers of height though. I think this will be really nice to drive around on a first person as you come into the city and then up this side. And also this view of the wind turbines coming in from the highway here. We'll have farm the other side as well is going to be super cute once that's all in. So yes, let's come on and do a bit of detailing and like we talked about, we'll use some of those samples that I have already shown you with various different pathways, fencing, rocks here and there as well, especially around this entranceway, I think. Um, and bring in lots of trees and decoration along this main collector here. And I will also fill out a little bit more residential in this grid to prepare us for next episode, getting the industry in this side.
So there we have the start to our brand new vanilla city and possibly the last start in City Skylines one for me. I, I'm feeling a little bit sad. But yeah, really liking how this starter interchange has turned out, like the view coming down here. Let's ignore the chimney stacks. <laughs> but with the two wind turbines and this rock and the walls tower just poking above it, like I really, really love it. Especially when you come up this hill and you've got the water tower there. The water tower actually ends up being quite a feature because if you look down this street, you can see it just poking out of the corner there at the end. So like really, yeah, really liking this view. Got quite a few people using our cycle path here and the cross path through. And just generally a lot of people walking around. Actually, this path in particular is very busy going down the side of the baseball field here, which I realise is actually slightly sunken into the ground because of the subtle changes in terrain height. Which I actually really quite enjoy. It's like a sort of baseball pit almost. <laughs> and yeah, people walking around the paths all the way around the outside. So yeah, really enjoying how that looks. The high school, I think, sits in pretty well as well with that just extra one unit border. And of course, we've got the elementary school over here as well. Yeah, I really quite enjoy this little playground here. Suburban fence works really nicely as a kind of privacy fence for the primary school, actually. And I did add in an extra water tower over here and I've had to expand the horrendous industry which we're going to ignore and completely fix next time and put in extra power as well. We've got a little bit of traffic building up here just because these interchanges are so close together but obviously that will be fixed next time as well. But yeah, really kind of enjoying this small town natural look with this kind of green belt overgrowth rocks detailing here. I'm embracing the vanilla trees for sure. And I think it's kind of come together quite well for the start of our brand new city. Oh, I did also reach Boomtown as well and of course had to add in cemeteries. Had a huge death wave because I had completely forgotten about it as a wave with the detail in. <laughs> but there we go, we've fixed it now. So please obviously do let me know your name suggestions for this city. We need to give it a name. So let me know in the comments below. And we've obviously got major decisions in terms of where to put the downtown, where to put other builds on this map, all still to come. So let me know your suggestions and patrons will be getting really involved in that. If you want to sign up to become a patron, the link is in the description below, alongside other ways to help support the channel if you have enjoyed this. But that brings me to a close, so if you have enjoyed it, likes, comments and shares are really greatly, greatly appreciated. Even if vanilla is not your thing, I'm still a detailer, so hopefully you can appreciate some little vanilla details. We're getting much more into the detail of that still to come. This is the kind of bare bones start for me. But that is it from me for today, so thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye!